for Hynex Exotics and welcome back to another episode. So this is something that I've been asked quite frequently is when you actually have to feed. So people are asking me when should they feed their animals and um, yeah let's go through this little black rack of mine and then explain to you quite a few variety of animals and how often to feed. So let's go. Alright, so jumping into this topic, which I actually enjoy, it's a really fun topic. I want to show you guys this, right? So I got myself a bunch of, what do you call these things again? <laughs> Happy stats. Now, damn, you guys know what? I'm so happy with these. Um, feeding's gone easier, everything's gone better. It's way better than my plastic cheapies that I've always been using. I do, however, still use my plastic cheapies for Tinkerballs, my Spedial Cayman, because you oftentimes bite down on the equipment I used to feed him with. So, I don't think steel biting down frame is going to be a good thing. Now, they've got these short heavy stats, these ones over here. Now, these I recommend for very, very small arboreal. So, something like uh, a neonate eyelash, neonate, well, neonate any arboreal. I would recommend these and for non-venomous SP that you just don't want to touch a rat with, but you're not scared of getting your hands tagged by. These over here, I would recommend for all things arboreal related that get larger, well, that are larger than units. These guys are quite nice, they're quite long. I think these are 300 long, which is a good keep away distance. And if you're not comfortable with the 300s, they even have a 600 range. These are quite nice. They're a bit expensive, to be honest, but these are gonna be for life, so they will last you forever. This is already 100 longer than the plastic one I've been using. And this is at a 600 long, so I can use this for just about any single species I have in this entire collection. All right, so now, look at, now let's talk about our, uh, how do I say this, our hosties for this video, right? So our trusted animals that we're gonna be using. So I've got two arboreal vipers here, one large bodied snake, and then one colubridae, and then another species of naja. Now, if you take a look at the key differences to all of these animals, right? Colubridae, fast, active animals. Large bodied snake, the yellow anaconda, slow, lethargic, and also needs large meals. Then you get the arboreal vipers. <coughs> They're up in trees, they're always in ambush, and then same with the cobra. And they are also, like a little bit, extremely active and actively hunt. So how do you know what to feed and how often you should feed? All right, so let's take a look at large body um, constrictors. So this little yellow unicorn, I guess she's obviously not a large bodied animal as of yet. But these guys would more often than not take larger meals that take extremely long to digest. You know, their metabolism, their metabolism, Horrible. Their metabolism is nothing quite like ours. They take an extensively large time to metabolize food before they're ready for a next meal. So let's say an anaconda, if you give them largest meals, you can feed them every 10 to 15 days. You don't have to have them on a weekly cycle. You can have them on every two week cycle. Now let's take a look at corn snake, right? Corn snakes don't often take very large meals. They often take meals that are about just the same girth as they are, which would be very much similar to this little rat pinky I'm showing you guys. So for a corn snake that eats about the same size as his body width and that's an extremely active animal, you want to have a snake like that on every seven to 10 day meal. So this would include all of your rat snake, majority of your, majority of your colubridae, day, um, Let's just get him out of his aggressive mode because I did disturb him. All right, so that would include all of your um, colubridae. That's like rat snakes, king snakes, corn snakes. Uh, I think these are the most common in the hobby for now. So let's start by those three uh, species. They all would eat on a seven to 10 day cycle, which is actually quite frequent if you think about it, but still not as frequent as a one week cycle because a one week cycle is strictly just every seven days. All right, so let's take a look at Naja now. Naja are very much similar to Caluridae's because they're also, <laughs> look at this dude, he's actually giving me a riled up time. They're also pretty much actively hunting consistently. <laughs> they're a high energetic snake, so they should be on a high protein diet, low fat and a high kilojoule intake. Now, how do you simulate that? You simulate that with variety, guys. With variety, you can make sure that you get all of an animal's dietary needs. But this guy specifically is on a 10 day meal cycle. Like a Lubridic, all Naja should have a 10, seven to 10 day meal cycle, which is um, a smaller meal than you would feed for other, uh, for, for other species of snakes. So they would eat a meal that's just like corn snakes, just as wide as the widest part of their body. 
This will make sure that you do not end up with a snake that gets fat. <laughs> I mean, look at this guy. He's all riled up. He's got energy. He's got spunk. Why? Because he's getting a very diet. Now, when I say he's getting a very diet, what do I mean? I mean, I'm feeding this guy mice, rats, snakes. If I can find geckos, I'll even give him geckos. If I can find small enough lizards, I'll even give him lizards. If I can find small enough quail, I'll even give him quail. That's how varied I want this guy's diet to be. Because that ensures me tackling every aspect of his dietary needs that I would have to. So now that we're done with the fast metabolism snakes, let's take a look at snakes that metabolize on an extremely slow rate. All right, so let's take a look at animals, like I said, that take extremely long to metabolize, which would be your ambush predating snakes, which means these snakes don't actively go about hunting for their food. They sit and wait. And I mean wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and probably only move when they defecate. So if you take a look at like gaboon adders, puff adders, things like that, they can sit in ambush for months. I mean literally months waiting for food to come by before they actually have an active meal. That's why it's very dangerous to have them in captivity because every single time you offer them food, they will 100% guarantee eat because they're opportunistic ambush predators, which means every time there's a possibility to eat, they will grab that opportunity to eat because they don't know when the next meal will come by by where they're ambushing. So that is basically the same for arboreal vipers. So let's take a look at this Schlegeli over here for a second. This animal over here would sit and wait on a little tree branch and the difference that she'll make is, is she'll come down at night, she'll come to about knee height in the forest and she'll lay there in ambush waiting for either little geckos, a little froggy or a little, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, what do you call it, a little field mice or something to pass by and then only that actively grab it. So they are on an extremely strange diet. I literally feed them between three to four weeks depending on the meal I offer. So let's look at this for example. This is a rat pinky, and this is obviously a very high in protein, but sadly also pretty much high in fat meal as well. So what does that exactly mean? That means when I feed her this, she's gonna wait between five to six weeks before I offer her another meal to eat because I don't want a snake that gets fat. That's a really bad thing for snakes. It is a very, very big killer in this entire collection. It takes years off a snake's life. It takes off, um, of their effectiveness when it comes to breeding. Yeah, there's just a whole list of issues paired with a fat snake. Now, if you look at her, you'll see that she is nothing underweight. Let me just heat this back up again. She's nothing close to an unhealthy snake. She, in fact, is an extremely healthy looking snake. Why? Because she's not fat. Look at that feeding response I'm getting out of her. She's not a fat snake, she's a massively good eater because she's on a very diet, she's eating less frequent than most, and she's got all her necessary kilojoules. All right, so now here's a Vogel's viper. This is another species that's on the complete opposite side of the planet than your Shilgetis. These guys are in the Amazon, oh, well, the Shilgetis are in your Amazon's Brazilian region. <laughs> your eyelashes are in your Amazon Brazilian regions, and the Vogels are in the Southeast Asian to Indian regions. Now, there's no difference other than where they come from. These guys are still ambush predators and they run the exact same cycle as the previous ambush predator that I explained to you guys. Now, males especially, you want a little less, you want to eat a little less than your females. Why? Because a male that gets too much weight will actually not be a good breeder he'll be an extremely bad breeder. So if your goal is to have snakes breed, which I believe everyone in captivity's goal is, because if you get an animal to breed, that means your husbandry is perfect. That means you have done everything in your power and correctly for that animal to feel comfortable enough to reproduce for you. So it's a very rewarding thing. Let's take a look at another large body species, right? The reticulated python. So these guys, you also eat smaller meals than you'd feed most of your other pythons. Why? Because they're also an extremely active species. They like being active. If you feed them two larger meals, you get animals that get 110, 120 kilograms, and that is not unhealthy retic. Just an FYI to everyone out there. That's not what unhealthy retic is. So these guys would eat smaller meals, or if you feed large meals, less frequent meals. I like to keep my retics on a 10 to 15 day cycle because I feed meals that just make a lump in their stomach. In other words, what I mean by that is let's say the animal's growth is like this, I would feed a meal that would make her about like that. So for this animal, I would give her a medium rat, which is 
if you think about it, not really a big meal. But if I offer her something like a medium red, she'll eat it every 10 days, which is quite frequent. And if I offer her something, let's say like a large or a jumbo red, which she can 100% take, I'll offer it every 15 days. Now let's take a look at this guy over here. This is the male. This is a male Maki reticulated python. Now these guys, I would feed way less frequently. Why? Because it's a male, guys. Males need to eat less because males need to have the necessary power to dominate a retic female. So, well, that's a whole th another video to get into retic breeding and things like that. But retics also shouldn't be on a very fatty diet. They should also have a very slender body shape, very active. So for reticulated pythons, I would feed a lot less. And that's something you guys need to do research on for every species you keep, is how often would they actually eat where they're from. Because that would be a direct link and influence to how often you should feed your animal. All right, so in essence, guys, what am I saying? I'm saying do the necessary research that you need to do for what you're keeping. If it's an ambush predator, it has to feed less frequently than usual. So my ambush predators all eat between three to six weeks, which is scary for most of you to think, but I'm not losing any vipers. My vipers are living a happy life. Secondly, my active species, my animals that actively hunt snakes, well, well, not just snakes, but my snakes that actively hunt, I give a meal every seven to 10 days. Because these guys metabolize quickly, they consume a lot of um, kilojoules, and they expend a lot of kilojoules while they're in their enclosures. So they need to have a frequent meal, or frequent enough meals to sustain them for that high energy levels. Now let's take a look at large body snakes. You get two different variations in my opinion. You get, like I just showed you guys, the retics that should be eating smaller meals and a little bit more frequent than your larger body snakes, your anacondas, that in my opinion should eat a bigger meal but not as frequent. So yeah guys, in essence, how do you know what to feed and when you know to feed, that's all up to you. You have to do the research of the species that you keep and determine for yourself how active your snake is, how frequent they, your snake would eat, and if you shoot every single time your snake would eat, offer him something to eat. I know it's difficult, but if you guys have any questions, you guys know where to find me. I've got Instagram, I've got Facebook, and I've got a brilliant comment section right down here on YouTube where you guys can ask any single question that you would like to. And for all my Reddit peeps out there, if you guys are watching, you guys know I appreciate you. From my heart, guys, you know I love you, you know I preach you. Peace out.